How did you get over suicidal thoughts? Serious. I have lived through the suicide of my mother, the suicide of my so's father, and lately the suicide of my son. The last is by far the worst. I have learned a few things in this, not the least of which is that no sense or rationalization can be made of a suicide. First, know that a suicide does not end any pain, it just redistributes it to others, who will have to bear it for longer than the one who kills himself, because they won't take that route. If this thought gives you pause, that's good, because the effects are worse than you imagine them to be. Second, what is common among those struggling with suicidal thoughts is that they are no longer able to perceive the positive. They are often disappointed in themselves and falsely imagine that they have disappointed others. That's a self-lie. They are unable to hear compliments and deflect them or turn them around. They are unable to accept love and pull into themselves. They imagine they are alone in the world when they have isolated themselves. That's another self-lie. The best way to get over suicidal thoughts is to fight these internal lies, calling them lies when they emerge. This is best done with the help of counseling and freely talking with others. When I say freely talking, I mean dredging up all the ugly stuff that you think will make people pull away. When you find out that real friendship means knowing your worst and loving your best, then you will not lie to yourself that they would not like you if they really knew you. Suicidal people are often pretty good at hiding their state from others. Get out from that mode and make your state known, and you'll be perhaps surprised at how people will not judge, not panic, not run. I haven't. They're much less serious now. In fact I thought I failed a final the other day and for once didn't want to step into traffic or off a bridge. So good. It's about not wanting to hurt my family or my girlfriend. I also got counseling a few years ago, and honestly just being able to talk through things with someone who won't judge you is awesome. Best of luck op and please talk to someone, because they don't go away, emo. Every time I thought why don't I just kill myself? It wouldn't be that hard. I immediately asked myself why? And since I never had an answer, I never did. Now that I dropped out of that college, I have been doing so much better mentally. One of my friends killed himself. It was a rough time. Well I don't know your specific situation. But I got over my thoughts by getting into a good group of friends. Although I never told anyone how I felt because it may alienate people. Try to figure out why you're depressed, if you're sad because of your weight try to fix that. Exercise can help your mood. If you're lonely try to get some good real life friends, or talk a lot online to others with similar problems like what you're doing now. I'm in school so that's all I got lol. I would feel different if someone else put a gun to my head. I would cringe. That told me that it wasn't death I was after, but change. I realized there were all these video games slash books slash movies I hadn't had a chance to enjoy yet. I came up with this in high school when a friend committed suicide. Whenever I have the slightest thought of suicide, I compare whatever my struggle is to what our ancient caveman ancestors must have had to endure. We can get food and shelter easily compared to them. We are not afraid of being eaten by wild animals. We know how to fight most diseases. Most births are safe for mother and child. Even at our worst we have it better than our ancestors. We owe it to them to carry on. I call that my anti-suicide routine, and I use it to shut down bad thoughts in about one second. Suicide is a permanent solution to your temporary problem. My suicidal thoughts stemmed mostly from a long developing belief that I was worthless, an inferior person. And that to end the constant suffering of failure, I would just exit life because whatever was beyond could not possibly be as bad as living in the constant turmoil of disappointed parents, superficial friends, and zero accolades. Worth noting that my parents were basically tiger parents, and so anything less than perfection was grounds for a verifiable browbeating. I get my social awkwardness from my parents as well, and that compounds my failings. How did I get rid of these thoughts? I found friends which found me worth something despite any failings, perceived or real. 
I would always be worried that I would say something wrong or be over enthusiastic and people would be turned off from seeing me as someone worth knowing. But then I found friends who didn't care ever. They liked me being around no matter what. Unlike my perpetually disappointed parents, these friends enjoyed me and found me worth their time no matter how college was going or how I said something kinda stupid. And most importantly, they taught me that worth didn't have to be measured by what I contributed to other people's lives. They're still teaching me that, because it's a lesson which contradicts 18 years of an upbringing, but I know they have faith in me and that they care about my well-being just as I care about theirs. Not all days are good days now, but that's to be expected. What's important is that the bad days don't involve me trying to decide which best way to make my exit from the world. I never got over my suicidal thoughts. I think about it from time to time and I just may do it, in the long run. The problem, I'm obese, I have man boobs, I don't have any friends, and I can't get a date to save my life. I'm trying to lose weight and it's just a losing battle. I've decided to give it one last try and if I don't succeed, I'm done. I care about my family and others, but it doesn't matter anymore. I might be a little late, but I got, get, over suicidal thoughts by reminding myself that I could never be that selfish. I don't remember who it was, but I remember watching a video saying that suicide is the most selfish thing you could ever do. I couldn't do something that would make everyone around me question what went wrong. To have the people left behind feeling that no matter what they did or said, they couldn't do anything. I feel that that is a feeling that doesn't really go away. I just realized that I was hurting everyone around my by even thinking that. That the best thing for those who loved me was to live a life they would be proud of. A few things. Overwriting your primary instinct towards negative ideation. We can be our own worst enemies with all the terrible things we tell ourselves when depressed. There must be a conscious effort to run new patterns in the mind, more specifically positive and encouraging thoughts. Surround yourself with friends and loved ones. Find someone you can talk to openly about your feelings who is going to be supportive. If your friends and family are not supportive or toxic, a talk therapist is vitally important. It is important not to feel alone. Creating goals and future plans to work towards. Many times the lack of progress in one's life leads one to feel like they are wasting their life. Write down all the things you want to do in your life, all the places you wish to travel. Start making steps towards making it a reality. By overcoming obstacles and achieving goals, you become empowered and feel more in control of your life. Exercise is vitally important. When the dark thoughts and empty feelings come flooding in, go for a walk or a long run to clear your head. Involve yourself in a physical activity which engages you, preferably one that also involves you socially. Lastly, don't be afraid to talk to a doctor about medication. For many people it can be a life changer. It is not a weakness to get medical care for a medical issue. If it even has a small change of allowing you to feel happy and motivated again, it is worth a try. When I was 12 I got Lyme's disease, long story short I was sick for 3 years. Between that time I couldn't really walk, being touched felt like needles, and every step I would take it would make my head hurt worse. I had migraines 24-7, it settled in my head. Since I was just in bed all the time and I eventually got tired of watching TV. I would just lay there. During this time I had gotten so upset at having any friends or anyone to talk to, and just wanted to get out of my house. It pushed me to the point of not really caring to be alive anymore. I couldn't even watch TV or play video games much anymore, because it got so boring. I began to just lay in bed, and now I realize at the point it got the worst I just naturally started meditating. My mind is kind of blown right now. After I started meditating I didn't care anymore if I was going to be just me rare encounters of people other than family. I was happy, I began to notice more of what goes on around me in the sense of feeling the energy in the room of people. I was beginning to feel the love of all the prayers being sent to me. I was happy as much as a 13 year old can with that bad of a disease. 
I played video games and made friends online and found how to make myself happy without any stimulus of the environment besides by using my brain. Meditation and video games, the ability to make friends online, is what helped my depression. Now I still like to meditate and do yoga when I can. TLDR, I was sick with Lyme's disease for 3 years, ages 13-16-ish. It led to being depressed, to such a point that I just started to meditate and didn't even realize that's what I was doing then. Mediation plus video games saved me from my depression. I would say getting over it may differ person to person. Just because we all think differently and have different reasons we may be depressed. Meditation is what helped me, and I'd say give it a shot. It is shown to actually help many forms of illnesses, like anxiety and depression. Doesn't even have to be for very long. Start slow 5 minutes a day to 7 to 10 to 15 to 20. Then just see how long you can one day, find what is comfortable for you. I think you'll come to the point where you meditate a lot if you did it that way honestly. If you use an alarm, use an flowing river or rain audio to notify you. That way it doesn't startle you and eases you out of the meditation.